Hey friends, Matt aka Matt Hilton here and today I'm going to be showing you three different ways that you can do parallel processing inside of Ableton Live. Before we get started, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below, subscribe if you're new and if you really enjoy my content, please consider buying me a coffee. You can find a link for that down in the description. So let's not wait around, we'll jump into Ableton Live and talk about parallel processing. Okay, so before we go through three different ways to perform parallel processing inside of Ableton Live, we need to talk a little bit about what parallel processing actually is is. So parallel processing is essentially splitting one single audio signal into two or more different paths and processing those paths individually and then combining them back afterwards. Common techniques for parallel processing include parallel compression, parallel distortion, or even spatial effects like reverb and delay. But you can also take parallel processing even further by adding more creative effects and even chains of effects. Too. So the first way to perform parallel processing inside of Ableton Live is via sends and returns. If you don't know what sends and returns are, I'll link a video up with via a card or something like that, which is one of my most recent videos that goes into everything you need to know about sends and returns. But here inside of Ableton Live, I've just got a break sample loaded up on an audio track, which sounds like this. And by default, our default session loads up with two return tracks. We have a reverb return track and a delay return track. I'm just gonna delete the delay return track. I'm gonna go on to our reverb return track. And all I need to do to basically perform parallel processing here is send a copy of my signal, my break signal to our reverb return track by increasing the send A amount. And now we have our dry signal coming through our audio track, our unprocessed signal, and then our reverb version of the signal on our reverb track right here. So if I now play the signal, we'll hear that we have a reverb version of our drum break. So if we mute our return track, we can hear it's just the dry signal. And if I solo the return track, our return track is just our reverb signal. And the two signals are recombining at our master track here, where we can then hear the combination of the two different signals. If we want to take this even further or do some other effects, we could either add some more effects or replace this reverb effect here on this return track. For example, if I wanted to do some parallel compression, I could replace this reverb with a glue compressor. And then I could pull down this threshold really heavily, have a really fast attack, a really fast release, a really high ratio, pull up the makeup gain a little bit to compensate, and now a return track sounds like this really heavily compressed drum track. And so we can now blend our heavily compressed drum track in with our non-compressed drum track. I could even take this a step further by adding some more effects. I could add some saturation, maybe heavily drive this a little bit and maybe turn down the dry wet a little bit as well as turning down the output to compensate for the drive. And now if we solo our return track, it sounds like this. So now we have a really heavily distorted version of the signal and our dry version of the signal. The pros about doing parallel processing this way is that it's really, really easy to set up and it allows us to send multiple signals to the same parallel chain at once really, really easily. Again, if you want to learn more about sends and returns, I'll link a video down below and in the card above. The cons of working with sends and returns for parallel processing is that it's harder to process the combination of the different parallel chains because by default, both tracks are routed to the master. You can only take a signal into a return track from the end of its insert chain so I couldn't have a bunch of effects, then some parallel processing, then a bunch more effects. And also due to the way in which sends and returns work, it actually doesn't work the best for effects such as parallel compression and distortion. Typically this type of way of working is much better for spatial effects like reverb and delay. So the next way of applying parallel processing is through audio effect racks. I'm gonna delete this return track here and I'm gonna to go to our break track. Now let's say I wanted to, again, perform some parallel compression and distortion on this break. Well, what I could do is insert a glue compressor onto this track. And once again, I could pull down the threshold really heavily, really fast attack, a little bit of a slower release, much more intense ratio and pull up the makeup gain to compensate. But now I want control over the level of this compressed signal versus the uncompressed signal. Now, of course, if I was just doing this with a compressor, I could play around with the dry wet control. But if I want to add some distortion after the compressor just to the compressed signal, I have to do something different. What I can do is I can right click the device title bar of the glue compressor and I can go to group. 
what that's going to do is group this to an audio effect rack. Now, audio effect racks can be really complicated and confusing. We're just going to use it for a really simple process here. I'm going to go to this bottom little option here, which is show and hide chain list. And then this gives me the option to have a bunch of different chains of audio. And each of these chains can run parallel to one another. So currently our first chain here has our glue compressor on it. I can call this compressed. I can now create another chain right here and I can call this dry. So now we have our break running through our audio effect rack and then our signal gets split. We have our signal going through the dry chain unaffected, but we also have the signal going through the compressed chain where it then gets really heavily compressed. And then at the end of the audio effect rack, these two signals recombine into a single signal, which we can then process and do some other stuff with if we want to. The beauty of this is we also get individual control over the levels of each of these different chains. You can see here inside of the audio effect rack, each of these chains have a chain volume control. So now if I play the signal, We can see that we have the signal going through both the compressed and the dry chain. If I solo the compressed chain, that's what it sounds like. And if I solo the dry chain, that's our dry chain. Now I can blend these two signals together by potentially turning down the dry level, turning up the compressed level. And now again, if I want to add some more processing to this compressed signal, I can do so. I could maybe add a saturator after this compressor. And now we're only applying saturation to the compressed version of the signal. Increase the drive, play around with some parameters here, decrease the output, decrease the dry wet. And now our compressed chain sounds a lot more distorted. And now I can blend this really distorted compressed signal with our dry signal to create a bit more of an interesting character for this break. One of the really great beauties of working this way is that I can have a lot of parallel chains here and I can create them really quickly and easily. I can just right click and create another chain and then maybe on this chain I could add a reverb. And if I set this to 100% wet, now we have a reverb chain, which is just a reverb version of the dry signal. And now I can blend all three of these different signals together. So I've split this single signal into three different paths, process those three different paths and recombine them at the end. The pros of this way of working is that once you get the hang of it, it's really easy and quick to set up. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it's super powerful and allows for some really quick and easy setting up of multiple parallel chains. Because it's in an audio effect rack, it also opens up a lot of other possibilities through utilization of things such as the chain selector, which is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. The cons of this way of working is that it can be a little bit hard to keep track of. If you have a lot of different parallel chains inside of a single audio effect rack, you might be scratching your head trying to figure out where that sound is coming from. You also can't process multiple signals through a single audio effect rack with a parallel chain on it like this, at least not when it's as an insert on the track. Other than that, this is probably one of the best ways to perform parallel processing inside of Ableton Live, but there is one other way. We can also perform parallel processing by routing one audio track into another audio track. So if I want to do this, I can simply create a new audio track. And then on this audio track, all I have to do is go to my input output section and go to the audio from drop down menu. And then I get the option to select where I want this track to receive its audio input from. I'm going to select our break track. Then I'm going to go to this monitor section and click on monitor input so that our audio track is constantly monitoring the output from our break track. And I'm actually going to leave this on post mixer for the moment, although you can switch this to pre effects or post effects, or if you have any audio effect racks on there, you could have pre or post effects or post mixer on any of those chains in that audio effect rack. If you want to learn more about this, check out my video on advanced routing techniques inside of Ableton Live. Actually, I lie, I'm going to set this to post effects just so we can demonstrate kind of what's going on here. Firstly, I'm just going to delete this channel EQ and this compressor off this audio track. And now if we solo this audio track, we can hear that it is our processed version of the break.
which sounds exactly the same as if we solo the original break track. So now what I could do is on this audio track, apply some processing. Maybe I want to do something really crazy here and I could apply a delay. I'm going to set this delay to 100% dry wet. And then maybe for the sake of it, I'm going to add something like a phaser to, and then another compressor just for good measure. Maybe set this delay to ping pong, play around with the feedback, play around with the rate of the phaser, turn down the amount, increase the feedback and pull down the threshold of the compressor, play around with some settings here just to make it sound a little bit more interesting. And now our processed version of the signal sounds like this. I'm going to decrease the amount of feedback on that delay there because it lingered for a little bit too long. And now using the track volume fader controls on both of these tracks, I can blend our break track here with our delayed, phased and compressed version of the signal. And then if you want to process both of these tracks together before the master, we could simply group both of these tracks by selecting both of them, right clicking and clicking group. And now I could apply say some limiting or compression to this group here so that I'm compressing the combination of our break signal here and our weird delayed phased break. The pros of this way of working is that it's really easy to visually see. You get each of your parallel chains broken up by different tracks and it also allows for some kind of interesting and complex routing. If you check out my advanced audio routing video, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. The cons of this way of working is that it is a little bit more time consuming to set up and beyond the complex routing, it doesn't offer a huge amount of advantages over using something just like an audio effect rack for parallel processing. Now there's no right or wrong way to perform parallel processing in live, and you can use all three of these different techniques in the same session because they all offer different advantages and disadvantages. So choose the one that works right for you. And so there are three different ways that you can perform parallel processing inside of Ableton Live. If you enjoyed the video and learned something new, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new. And if you really enjoyed this video, consider supporting me by heading over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can buy me a coffee, become a member, and even get some really cool things in the process. And make sure to check out this video right here where I go through some even more advanced routing techniques inside of Ableton Live. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next video.